Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Michel Akkad, the Medical Director of Athletic Heart of San Francisco. In this video, I, I thought I would address a topic that um, uh, I get asked about a lot, which has to do with the pulse rate. And if I can minimize my, my view box here. Okay, so the question is, what should my pulse rate be? I get asked that question a lot from people who go to the gym and they have their heart rate monitor and they want to exercise at a certain certain target heart rate and to them it seems that either they cannot reach that target or their heart rate quickly goes beyond you know the zone and so forth and and they get worried and so let's talk about that just as a review you know we're going to talk about the pulse and what is the pulse the pulse really is that with each heartbeat there is a pressure wave that is initiated by the heart and travels down the arteries to help deliver blood and oxygen oxygen to the tissues okay so the pulse really is the palpable rise in pressure that can be felt over an artery okay that's that should be you know basic uh, for everyone here you can feel it at the carotid artery and it's easy because the carotid artery is near the surface of the skin so we have access to it as opposed to the aorta which is in the middle of, middle of the chest here so so the carotid artery another place is the radial artery okay and you can feel the pulsation here now of course most people nowadays or many people nowadays use heart rate monitors that detect the pulse uh, in a different way they don't detect the pressure but they, they can detect other physiological phenomena that uh, uh, accompany the pulse but for the sake of simplicity here we'll just talk about uh, about the pulse okay and what is the pulse rate so the pulse rate is the number of pulses per minute okay and you can feel your carotid and, you know, get a stopwatch and, you know, wait 30 seconds, get, you know, see how many pulsations, count how many pulsations, multiply that by, by two and you get your number of pulses per minute. Or there are many different ways of, of doing that. Okay, now, generally, and almost by definition, the pulse rate is equal to the heart rate. Now, I just want to mention that it's not always the case. There can be situation, situations where... Um, there are more heartbeats than can be detected by the pulse. And uh, th that's rare, but it can happen. It can happen with certain forms of uh, arrhythmias where not all heartbeats are sufficiently strong to generate a pulse that you can feel, okay? But for the purpose of this talk here, we'll just talk, I, I will use the term heart rate and pulse rate uh, interchangeably uh, as if, uh, you know, they're both the same, okay? Now, the question is, what determines the rate, okay? Remember, each heartbeat and pulse delivers uh, oxygen and nutrients to the body, okay? But uh, the heart rate will increase or decrease to deliver more blood and nutrient as needed, you know, depending on what's going on. The best example is when you exercise. When you exercise, your body needs more um, blood and oxygen delivered, uh, in particular to the muscles of the body, and you get a faster heart rate, you know, to improve that uh, delivery, okay? That improves, improves the, the cardiac output and you get more pulses uh, per minute, okay? But generally speaking, there are many, many factors that influence the heart rate. Age is one factor. Your nutritional status or your hydration status is one factor. Your sleep status is a factor. The stress level is a factor what you're thinking at the time that you measure the pulse is a factor. If you're very relaxed, your heart rate may be slower. If you're very anxious or preoccupied, your heart rate can go up. There may be genetic factors that determine your heart rate. There are anatomic factors that determine the heart rate. There are factors about the health of the heart. There are really a gazillion factors that can determine what the heart rate is at any given point in time, okay? So, but in general, the more efficient the cardiovascular system, the lower the heart rate needs to be, okay? Because again, if the goal is to deliver uh, oxygen and nutrients to the tissues, the more efficiently the cardiovascular system can do it, the, the fewer the heartbeats you know, may be necessary, okay? And that's why athletes who are very well trained and have a very efficient cardiovascular system tend to have a slower resting pulse rate, okay? And here, when I talk about the efficiency of the cardiovascular system, it's not just the efficiency of, of the heart 
the, the pumping action of the heart. It can be also the efficiency of, uh, you know, the way the blood vessels deliver uh, blood to the tissues, the efficiency by which uh, blood can be diverted from a, a place where it's needed in the body to a place, or I'm sorry, from a place where it's not needed in the body to a place where it's needed. There are many uh, aspects of this question of uh, efficiency. But in general, the more efficient the cardiovascular system, you know, the, the slower the heart rate. And, um, and, and that's why regular exercises, by increasing the efficiency of the cardiovascular system, will tend to lower the, uh, the resting heart rate. Okay? All right. So the question is, what should my exercise pulse rate be? Over the last, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, you know, for a long time, uh, trainers have um, uh, converged on this idea of a, a training zone, that when you do cardiovascular exercise on a regular basis, whether it's a treadmill or jogging or whatnot, that it's, it's helpful to push yourself a little bit so that you're, you're in a zone, what's called the training zone, that um, we identify generally as 50 to 70% of your maximal heart rate, okay? And if you do that regularly, maybe 30 minutes each time, three times a week, something like that, or more frequently, if you do that regularly, if you, if you um, exercise regularly like this, your cardiovascular system will get healthier and more efficient and, and you know, good things will happen. So, so this, this uh, idea of a training zone has been um, uh, suggested and, and is, is used frequently to help people who want to get in shape or stay in shape exercise and have something that they can monitor. But the question comes up is, what is the maximal heart rate, right? If you're going to train at 50 to 70% of your maximal heart rate, what is the maximal heart rate? And the definition of the maximal heart rate is the heart rate at the limit of exhaustion, where you're really about, you're exercising so hard that you're, you're going to faint, right, and collapse. That is really, that's the maximal heart rate. Now, of course, we, we don't, we rarely uh, get to that point, okay? We, we, all of us, we tend to stop before the point of exhaustion. So to actually measure the maximal heart rate really requires a, a setup. You need, uh, you know, if it's done scientifically, you need a, an apparatus called a metabolic cart where you, you hook up um, uh, to an oxygen, uh, oxygen sensor and, and carbon dioxide sensor to measure your, your gas exchange. Uh, you know, and then you start exercising on, either on a treadmill or, or on a stationary bicycle and really push yourself very, very hard. Uh, on occasion, you know, uh, draw, uh, blood can be drawn to measure your acid level and see if your, your body starts producing acid so that we know for sure that you're at your maximal uh, uh, effort, you know, as opposed to somebody saying, okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pooped out here, I'm going to pass out. Well, no, we, have, we want to have some objective measures that you really are reaching your, your maximum uh, heart rate. And that's very complicated to do. Uh, obviously, you, you're not gonna do this at the gym. You know, it requires uh, fancy equipment and so forth. So measuring the, heart, the maximal heart rate is not, is not that easy. Instead of that, people have come up with ways of estimating the maximal heart rate with some kind of formula. And the formula that most of you may be familiar with is the one that's where you you, you used 220 minus your age, okay? If you, if you, if you're, that's a formula that was uh, proposed, uh, you know, in the 1970s, you know, many years ago. 220 minus the age gives you a rough guide of what your maximal heart rate is, okay? The problem with that formula or any formula of that sort is that they're, they're really, they're not very accurate. On the graph here, I'm giving you an example of a, a fairly recent paper. That paper was published, I think, you know, 15, 20 years ago or so, um, trying to improve on the 220 minus age formula. And, uh, and that's, that graph, what they do, you know, to come up with that formula, they take a bunch of healthy, healthy people, they actually measure the maximal heart rate for those healthy people. You know, they put them on a, on a treadmill, they push them to the max with the metabolic uh, cart uh, and so forth. They, they make sure that they reach their, their maximal heart rate. And then they say, okay, for you, your maximal heart rate is X number, whatever it is, you know, 180 or, or 170 or, or whatever it is. And then 
they note what the age of the person is. So you get a bunch of people of different ages. So here you see ages, you know, 20 to, to 80 or even more. All these people have been pushed to their max. You know, all of these are healthy people. They're pushed to their max. And then you try to come up with a, 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 um, an equation for the line that would model or, or match you know, all these people. But you can see that there's a very wide scatter that people are a little bit all over the place, okay? So the, the improved formula here in this particular case, instead of using 220 minus the age, if you're a man, the, the, the best equation would be 209 minus 0 0.72 times your age. If you're a woman, the best equation would be 207 minus 0 0.65 times your age, okay? So that will give you the, the improved equation, if you will, but at the same time, even, even with this improved equation, you can tell that you know, people are all over, the, all over the place, meaning you can have somebody whose maximal heart rate, a healthy person, whose maximal heart rate is 140 at age 60 or, or, or 58, where another person, same age, their max heart rate may be you know, more than 180 and so forth, okay? So the formula is really a very rough guide and it doesn't do, do justice to the wide diversity of maximal heart rates that are out there in the community among healthy people, okay? So, so that's a very important point that I want to make because if that's the case, then if we use that formula 220 minus the age to estimate our heart rate and to estimate our target training zone, you know, it's very possible that, you know, you may be off, but it's, you're not off because, you know, there's something wrong with you but it's just because the formula is, is so imprecise, okay? So there's much variation among healthy people and even among well-trained athletes, okay? And it is such that the, 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 the training zone may not, be, may not capture uh, what is really 3 to 70% of your own personal maximal heart rate. So the question becomes then, does it really matter? And in truth, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you're a, a casual um, person who wants to exercise and stay in shape and obtain good cardiovascular health for yourself, you, you don't need to know that, you know, to know exactly what your maximal uh, heart rate is and, and really uh, exercise at, uh, in that training zone of 50 to 70%. You can use a, 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 another method, which is really a rule of thumb called the talk test. The talk test is, exercise so that you're pushing yourself right but you're not exhausting yourself and you can still carry on a conversation clearly okay and if you can do that if you can exercise at that level of carrying on a conversation clearly so that you're not you know gasping for air and you can't put you know three words together okay then you know you're doing good you're you're having you're putting enough effort and you're going to be able to sustain that for 20 minutes 30 minutes and, and that's gonna be your, your talk test, your rule of thumb for where you're exercising. And don't obsess about what your pulse rate is, okay? Now, if you, if you, if you I'm not, I don't wanna discourage you from using your, your pulse rate, but I just wanna say that, you know, it, it's not the end all be all of, uh, of exercising. And really what's much, much more important is how you feel, okay? And if you're feeling fine, you can carry out the conversation and, and things, things are okay. You know, if you're not reaching what the formula tells you should, your heart rate should be, or if your heart rate goes beyond what the formula tells you, don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> Chances are you're going to be okay. Now, having said that, the next question would be, can the pulse rate be an indicator, indicator of heart disease? And uh, uh, in truth, uh, yes, the, it, can, it can be, right? So any heart disease will lower the efficiency of the heart rate and will produce generally higher heart rates to deliver blood than otherwise if the heart was, was healthier. On occasion, it can even produce a lower, you know, you can have a lower heart rate if you have cer certain kinds of um, heart blocks and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. So it's true that the pulse can be an indicator of heart disease, but it's very rarely the only symptom of heart disease, okay? Most of the time, if, if the pulse is erratic, you know, way too fast or too slow because of heart disease, there will be other manifestations. There will be shortness of breath, fatigue, feeling faint, or you know, things of that nature. If you're feeling well, and the only thing that's striking you as being 
possibly abnormal is that your heart rate doesn't fall in the predicted category of the training zone based on the formula, chances are you're going to be okay. It's maybe for some people it may be difficult to 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 judge, especially if you're, you know, really uh, you haven't exercised for a long long time, you're really out of shape, and you start to exercise, and and your heart rate goes, you know, maybe too fast, and and you're gasping, and you don't know if you're gasping because you're out of shape, or are you gasping because there's something wrong with your heart? It may be difficult to sort it out. In that case, it may be prudent to get it checked out to go see your doctor. Uh, for an evaluation, but otherwise, if you if if things feel you know okay, chances are you're okay. Okay, so take home message, you know, learn to check your pulse rate. It's one of the vital signs. It may be helpful to know if you feel unwell. Okay, if you feel unwell, you know, uh, and you know if you have a heart rate monitor, great. If not, you can feel your 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 radial pulse or your carotid pulse. That may be something helpful to know, and then you can communicate that to your doctor. Okay, but the formulas to estimate the training zone pulse rate are very imprecise, and they need not, need not be the only measure to guide your training intensity. Okay, and then finally, at times, an unusually fast or slow pulse could be a sign of, of a heart problem, but usually other symptoms are present. Okay, most of the time, uh, you know, there can be cases where, you know, uh, the, the an abnormal pulse is really the only manifestation of a heart disease, but that's really quite rare. Okay, I, I don't want to say that it never happens, but it's quite rare. So, so, um, so usually there would be other symptoms: shortness of breath, you know, maybe chest pain or chest pressure, feeling faint, you know, feeling particularly fatigued, and that sort of thing. And if in doubt, you know, check it out. All right. So that's my uh, my episode for today. Um, thank you. Uh, if you find this interesting, don't forget to. Uh, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel or to like us on the Facebook page, or you can go on the website of Athletic Heart SF and uh, subscribe to the newsletter, and then you will get a notice whenever I, I produce a, another video. All right. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.